Everyone has had an idea to create some sort of tech product. Wouldn't it be cool to have an app that made it easier to split a bill at a restaurant? Now there's apps like Venmo. Uh, wouldn't it be cool to have an app that encouraged you to disconnect and focused on your mindfulness? Well, now there's apps like Headspace. All of these influential tech products, all of these apps, they started off as ideas. An idea that someone nurtured, invested in, and eventually brought to life. How did they do that? How can you do that? How can you turn your idea from concept into a real life product? How can you vet your idea and ensure that it's something that you really believe in that you'll be encouraged to work on in the long term? How can you turn your idea into a real life product and potential business? That is what we're gonna talk about here. I'm Charles, I'm an engineer. I've been building apps for large companies for a long time and I've created this channel as a space to explore creative ideas and talk about how to turn them into a reality. So join me on this journey while we work on building out a mobile app and talk about even if you're not a technical person, how can you bring this to reality? What are the practical steps that you need to take? Welcome back to Brave Goals. Let's talk about your goal of bringing your tech idea to life. But where do we even start, right? There are so many things to do to get from, hey, wouldn't it be cool if there were an app that to, hey, check out this thing I just built. Tell me what you think about it. By the end of this video, you'll have more clarity on the first five phases that you should focus on in the journey of bringing your idea from just a concept in your head to a real life product that you can interact with. So let's get to it. Number one, keep track of your ideas. This is the first phase, and this phase is of an indeterminate amount of time. Perhaps you go through a two week period where you just feel like you're overflowing with creativity and you're really into a lot of these different ideas. You think they have a lot of potential, that's great. Or maybe it's over a several month period where you sporadically come up with an idea that you think has a lot of potential. That's cool too, I've experienced both of those. Uh, the key thing is write them down. <laughs> you don't wanna lose them. If you're like me, you might keep these in a bunch of different places. I use Evernote, so sometimes I'm writing things down I can do it on my phone or on my computer I'll leave myself a voice note um, I have a regular text file where I can write down different ideas and kind of vet things and kind of try to poke holes in them and do them in the text file that's great whatever your your medium is just be sure to write them down because most likely the first idea that you come up with is not going to be something that you really want to run with it's, it could be something that's more easily um, shut down with criticism. Keep a track of all these different ideas and over time you'll build up a, just a wealth of all these different different concepts and different projects that you may want to work on such that you have so much that you may find that one that's just a that good like golden nugget perfect idea that you want to invest more time in. Yeah over time you'll end up with just a wealth of tons of ideas and eventually you'll find that one that you're so excited about that you're so motivated to explore that that really drives you to keep going and that takes us to phase two be obsessed right you need to be obsessed with this this idea um some people might prefer the word focus i like obsessed because i think it more accurately describes like my combination of motivation and impatient and excitement and brave risk taking i say the word brave and i named this channel brave goals because it takes courage to put yourself in a position where you might fail right to step out and try to make something a reality that is difficult or where the path is not clear. Um, it takes bravery to do that and, and it's a lot easier to be brave when you're really excited about something, you're obsessed about something. Uh, if you've had a sleepless night where it's hard for you to get to sleep because your mind just won't shut down, you're thinking about this idea, kind of exploring it from different ways and not just getting lost in the potential of what could be and kind of building upon things you know that you don't even have yet, hey, not even starting, but thinking about the, the process of it and exploring the idea. Um, if you're so excited about that, that's a great sign that you've come across something that is motivating enough that it will fuel you to drive through all the challenging moments where things get really difficult. Um, that's normal in product development, right? In developing tech, you have to be really excited about something to stay motivated in the most challenging times. So be obsessed about your idea. Phase three, share your idea. Share your idea with close friends, family, ideally people who are in the target audience of whatever your app may be, right? You wanna share your idea with people who are in the target audience, people that you trust because you want their feedback. You want to hear the questions that they ask. Pay attention to reactions as you talk them through the journey of whatever your app is. What parts make them smile, right? Focus on that. What parts make them question? What parts make them look like they might be confused? That's really valuable information that can help you make 
make your idea become stronger, right? Does your idea withstand their initial criticism? Great, if it does. If it doesn't, why not? How can we make your idea stronger? How can we make the product better? Talk them through the, the journey of what it feels like to, to use your app. What do they question? Um, that feedback is really valuable, especially in the early phases, because you can quickly get feedback and change your idea as needed before you've invested a lot of time in developing things too far. So it's really valuable to share your idea with people that you trust so you can get their feedback and let your idea grow from their criticism, their questions. Make sure you don't get caught up in their hype. If they're just overly supportive, it's great. Be supportive, that's cool. Uh, but don't get caught up in the hype, right? Because at this point, you're in the beginning. All you have is an idea. Maybe you've written things down, beginning to think about how to build it, but stay focused on what it is that you're really trying, trying to do here. Uh, share your idea, get that feedback, and let your idea grow. All right, the fourth phase. This interaction design is a descriptive story, visual diagram describing the flow of experience of a user. This helps to kind of bring that idea, bring some more life into it, right? You're able to put more color into the overall experience. That's what the interaction diagram is. And you don't have to be an artist to do this. Whatever your chosen medium, writing this down, diagrams, boxes and arrows, stick figures, that's a good place to start. Um, as long as it allows you to express this in a different way and be begin to add color to what is the experience of a user going through the app. This is a fun part, right? Think about coloring in a coloring book and <laughs> trying to describe these things and don't be afraid to go out of the lines. There's no way to mess this up. You're just exploring the journey and trying to develop, make more concrete what the experience is uh, that you want the user to have. What's the ideal flow there? That's what the interaction design is all about. That's a fun part. There's a lot of exploration there. And that takes us to the fifth part of, of this first phase, right? And it's a little bit more difficult, especially depending on your skills and what, what your unique area of interest are. The fifth part is technical feasibility. That means, is your app your idea even possible, right? It, it, granted, anything is possible given an unlimited amount of time, an unlimited budget. You can hire all the skills that you need to get something done, but what reality are we living in, right? How difficult is your idea going to be? Is it web application? Is it a mobile app? Is it both? Is it relatively simple? Is it quite complex? Is it built on top of an existing product, right? Are you building an app for an existing platform like Facebook, Google, or Amazon? Are you building something that's gonna leverage Alexa? Is it voice activated? Things like that. This is the phase where you take your interaction diagram, your interaction design from the previous phase, and for each step in the user's journey, you wanna analyze, okay, where is the user interacting with this? And how is it gonna be supported? How is it gonna be implemented technically? Probably sounds really confusing if you're not used to this process, you're not an engineer, that's cool no problem you don't have to be an engineer to do this part you can work with an engineer work with someone who who does this who's technically inclined to look at the requirements of a user experience and think about how to accomplish that technically check the description below i'm going to drop some links to some places where you can um, collaborate with people who do this professionally right people who are looking to work with you to help you develop your idea and determine what's technically possible it's like doing a consultation for constructing a house right uh, you have this idea for the remodel that you want to do, you need to come speak to someone who's professional, who can come up with the architecture and kind of poke holes in your design and give you a rough idea of the overall cost involved and the, the general effort. Same thing here when developing the application. Um, I'm going to drop some links there to some helpful references that point you in the direction of different types of companies and services, whether it's a whole business or a site where you can contract out with one person to work with them. Uh, because a good engineer can take about a couple hours once they have a solid understanding of the interaction and work on a proof of concept, that will be good enough to poke holes in your idea, determine what the roadblocks are, or to give you a general idea of, yes, this is possible, and this is roughly the, uh, a rough estimate of what, what it would take to get it done. That was a quick run through on the first five phases in the journey of bringing your app idea to life. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching. My name is Charles. I'm an engineer and founder of Brave Labs. I love to create products and bring ideas to life. Uh, but overall, I like to have fun and stay motivated while I'm accomplishing my goals. That's what this channel is all about. Uh, in this first series, uh, we're gonna focus on the goal of bringing your app idea to life. What's the process involved there? The next videos are going to elaborate on the different phases that we mentioned previously and follow along as I'm developing an app and going from ideation, visual design, working with designers to really express your idea, technical feasibility, implementation, and getting this in the hands of real people. Uh, so please hit subscribe, follow along, add a comment below, let me know if there is any part of the video that you particularly liked. If you have specific questions on anything, wanna see more uh, exploration on a specific topic, give a thumbs up. If you really enjoyed that, I appreciate it thumbs down, maybe if you really feel so inclined. Um, but yeah, hit subscribe, follow along. Thanks for watching. And you gotta be brave to accomplish your goals, right? So that's what we're doing here. Thanks guys.